Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Round 2 Peterbilt California Hauler 359. It's a 125 scale AMT kit number 866. This is a re-release that was first seen in the early 70s. And while they don't give a skill level, I would say it's an advanced builder's kit. There's roughly 250 parts molded in white, chrome, clear, and clear red, and it has vinyl tires and metal axles. This kit's seen life as a number of other issues, and Round 2 has cleaned up the parts and molds very well. They're crisp and have good detail with little flash. The assembly is detailed with a full motor, chassis, and interior, and the cab is one piece, with fenders and a separate and the hood. Now, there's no sleeper included in the kit, unfortunately, but the chrome is bright, the details are crisp, the tires are good quality, they're not warped, and unfortunately there's no dash decals, but the body decals gives you two different options and two different uh, stripes uh, for different colorations. Now the instructions are typical old style AMT. Overall size is approximately length 11 and a quarter inches, width 3 and 3 quarter inches, and height 6 inches. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see, they're very colorful and the registry is good. I strongly recommend using some decal setting solution to make it fit those contours. But, as always, use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products mentioned here in the review for your own protection. For most of the construction, I use Model Master liquid cement and sometimes a slow setting tube glue. But other adhesives are used too for strength like super glue and white glue for clear parts. Mostly the paints are Tamiya acrylic bottle paints that are shot through an airbrush or rattle can paints that can be used for things like primers. Gather these parts for the motor and most of it can be assembled prior to painting which makes for a better finish. Also many of the chrome parts get painted too because there's not that many chrome parts on a semi trucks engine. Assemble the block, oil pan, heads, lower and upper front covers, transmission rear plate oil filter, blower drive case front and back, and the oil filler tube. Then assemble the blower halves and the front and the rear and add the governor. On the valve cover add the oil filler. Quite often Peterbilt would custom paint the motor to match or contrast the frames and bodies for a customer's special order. I painted mine uh, green with an aluminum transmission and the governor's aluminum and the oil uh, so is the oil cooler. The exhaust manifolds are steel. Starter is black with a gold solenoid and the belt is flat black. Now final motor assembly would have you add the blower uh, and valve covers to the motor's top then add the oil cooler and exhaust manifolds and the starter. Then install the air compressor and add the belt. Pull out these pieces to construct the chassis and assembly is started by the, uh, the assembly of the frame rails then install the cross members in place and the notches in the frame rails on one side at a time. And Add the other frame rail and press the rails together tight to ensure that the glue joints are secure. Now make sure that the frame stays straight. And again, Peterbilt custom painted the frames to match the frames or the fender accent color uh, or stripe. So I'm using steel color for the frame that will contrast the body color. Paint the belts flat black, as you see these parts here, and then paint fan black. Install the upper radiator hose and lower radiator hoses with slow setting glue. Then add the filter to the upper hose. Install the alternator onto the small belt and add that to the motor. Then on the large belt add the fan uh, mount and the fan. Then assemble the air compressor and add it. And install the motor into the frame at this point. Add the belt in place on the front of the motor then. Get out the parts for the wheels and the tires can be given a rough road look uh, by pressing and rolling the tread on some fine sandpaper and that kind of gives it a uh, road wear kind of appearance. Now paint the hub either body color or chassis color and insert the hub into the rim. Insert the rim into the tire and super glue the trim ring to the rim's edge. Now we'll gather the rear wheels and note that the inner rims have no lugs. So um, the tires again uh, can be given a road look with uh, by sanding the tread off on some fine sandpaper and then paint the rear drum chassis color insert a tire into each of the eight rims and super glue the trim rings to the rims edges 
Now, um, with respect to the inners, uh, attach the inner rim to the drum, then attach the outer rim to the inner rim. Uh, use some super glue to keep those together. Gather these parts for the rear uh, air ride. Now the mounts are painted uh, chassis color. The bags and shocks are flat black with uh, tops and the bottoms of the bags chassis color too. Add the bags to the mounts and slide the mounts in place adding the shocks to the frame and mounts on their respective mounting pin. Gather these suspension pieces uh, for the next stage and some of these can be assembled prior to paint. Subassemble the rear axles and backing plates then add the brake mounts and the cylinders to the plates. Assemble the front axle with the hubs and the axle pins and add the tie rod. Paint the assembled rear axles, front axle and midship bearing a chassis color. Then paint the shocks, steering box, idler arm and pitman arm flat black. Paint the drive shafts aluminum and steel with a mix of 50-50. Super glue the front drive shaft to the midship bearing and transmission installing the midship bearing. Add uh, the mid drive shaft with the forwardmost rear axle and then install the rear drive shaft and the rear axle. Insert the metal axles with the rear dual tires at this time. Add the front tires to the front axles and install the front axle. Add the shocks, install the steering box, idler arm and pitman arm. This uh, is the completed front suspension which is where you should be at this point. This is the rear suspension so that you can see where all the details go together. Now we can finish the chassis assembly by adding the tanks and accessories. I assembled the two fuel tanks and painted them body color with aluminum straps. Then assembled the battery box and I painted that chrome. Paint the fifth wheel carrier and wheel plate flat black and install those. Uh, the mud flaps are flat black. The fuel tank steps are chrome. Assemble the air tanks and install those on the frame. Assemble the tail lights and install that. Then add the deck plates and the pogo stick and add the reserve tank. Install the battery box. Assemble and install the fifth wheel. Install the mud flaps and then add the fuel tanks with the steps on the passenger side. Now your rolling chassis is completed and you can set that aside to begin work on the interior. We'll start the interior by assembling the driver's seat base. On the base, add the front bar and the back bar, then the side supports. This is flat black. Add the passenger seat to the base, add the heater cord to the inner firewall, and add the filler brace to the up, upper open area on the passenger side interior tub. The dash and the wheel are painted interior color with a flat black column, and the wheel has aluminum spokes. I used a flat tan color to contrast the exterior. I painted the interior walls and seats flat tan. The floor, firewall inside and outside off of the tub are flat black and the pedals and the shift knob and boot are black. Yeah, the outside firewall is body color with the wires highlighted black or silver and on the door panels highlight the window cranks and trim them in silver. Assemble the seats and add the seats to the tub. Install the pedals and the shifter and then add the firewall. Now you'll notice in the photo you see the steering column and the wheel. I installed those early to make it easier to install the dash. The kit doesn't come with a decal set for the in, uh, dash panel so I went online and found one uh, and then I printed it out on some uh, paper with a color printer and sized it to fit my dashboard. Then uh, I scraped um, you know all the places the smooth that need the uh, decals to represent those gauges and applied it to the uh, dashboard. Then I also uh, I add the brake handle at this time and then the dash is completed. With the column and wheel approximately in place we can add the dash to the interior then just move the column forward a little bit and glue it into place on the dash. Then assemble the interior onto the frame and add the steering linkage from the column to the steering box below. See the red arrow. Now we'll get these parts out to start building the body assembly and the only part that's optional is the roof AC unit marked here in red. I decided to uh, make this look like a newer rig so I didn't use the AC part. Uh, I'm including a kind of a color coded map here uh, for the various parts that go on the roof. You'll have to drill out the holes for the parts that you use. Um, depending on that uh, I have uh, color coded the holes to decide so the red ones are for the running lights, 
the green is for the horns and you can do an option of left right or both and uh, the blue are the AC unit holes and as you see mine uh, they were left undrilled because I didn't install that assemble the cabs sides and add the air cleaner and the luber fine uh, mounts and then on the hood add the fenders and the mud flaps assemble the air cleaner and the luber fine with all the detail and uh, ex the exposed rivets, I decided not to try sanding the body. Uh, so I used a, a green scrub pad just to kind of rough it up and clean off some of the uh, flash. Uh, and then I painted it with a good primer inside and out. So after the primer dried, I gave it a good uh, scrub with my scruffy pad there. And then I gave it uh, a, a couple of base coats of color and then let that set uh, to cure fully. Now we can begin adding our decals to the model and I usually try to apply the uh, largest uh, decals first uh, and work from the front to the back or top to the bottom uh, just to keep things straight uh, but I strongly suggest uh, using the setting solution so that the decals will adhere and uh, conform to any irregularities in the body surface. Once you've got the decals in place, you can give your model uh, a clear coat to uh, seal in the decals and give it that high quality shine. To add some finish detail, I used a silver paint pen or a black sharpie for trim and straps. And once that was finished, I installed the air cleaner and the lubrifying. And now I clear coat the entire body and hood again. I used a window tint to darken the uh, side and back windows. Then go ahead and install the glass into the cab using some white glue. Now we mount the cab by sliding the cab over the interior and into place onto the chassis. Then glue along the firewall to hold it tight. Pull out the under hood items uh, so they can be finished. Install the wipers and paint the air tube flat black. Assemble the elbow and paint it flat black. Assemble the radiator and add uh, the three hoses and paint that flat black as well. Install the radiator uh, while lining up the hoses and gluing them to the motor. Then install the air tube and the elbow and glue those into place. Add the lube finder cover and add the bottom to the air cleaner and assemble the top and add it into place. Pull out the parts for the roof accessories and paint the marker lights transparent yellow. Install the marker light lenses to the bezels and add them to the roof. Assemble the horns and install those in place and the lenses are added to the spotlights and the spotlights are then glued to the roof. Gather up the parts for the mirrors and the stacks. I use super glue here, here but make sure that you scrape off any chrome uh, at your glue contact points. Now assemble the stacks and add the grab handles. Install those onto the corner of the cab. Install the door handles. The mirrors are built in a progression so install the upper and lower supports and add the mirror hang support then add the crossbar and finally the mirror. Then repeat for the other side. Now we can assemble and add the hood. So first paint the grill mesh with a 50-50 flat black and thinner uh, mix and then add the logo decal. Install the grill to the hood. Add the turn signals and marker lights on the hood and paint the lenses transparent yellow. Add the lenses into the headlights and install the headlights onto the grill side. Add the lenses to the fog lights and paint them transparent yellow. Glue those to the bottom of the bumper and the bumper is glued to the ends of the frame. Now the hood just slides in place and sits there without any support. Now we're almost done and here's a rear view of the nearly completed uh, cab. Final assembly uh, involves adding the exhaust pipes to the underside. As you can see here, uh, you turn the chassis over and install them into place. You'll use almost all the parts except for some decals and in my case I did not use the um, air conditioning unit. And there's also a sprue of transparent red parts that uh, were included from another version. Well there you have it. She's a great looking kit when you're done. But expect to do a little extra work on this one. It's an older mold design and kit and you know the sprue tabs are thick. Um, on some of the chrome parts you, you just have to hit that with a silver pen some of the parts don't fit quite well uh, but the chassis was straight had no issues with that the locating points were good uh, the motor built up very easily fit together nicely but 
it's a little tricky to get that um, installed into the frame but take your time and you can do that too uh, the interior is not too bad the details on the dash were crisp uh, but there were no um, decals for the gauges the cab is a one part unit uh, as is the hood and when fitting the parts on the truck in final assembly it's not a perfect fit so you may have to massage it uh, with a little sanding or trimming here and there overall the assembly was uh, easy for a builder with experience but uh, I would not recommend this for a novice um, and round two has continued to release some of these great old truck kits from the past and we're happy that they are um, and overall I think you're gonna love the way this turns out if you give it a little time and attention we hope you like this premium quality step-by-step -step review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel but you can find us on Facebook and also at our website www.writeonreplicas.com thanks